Chapter 2, The Photo Impact Interface In this chapter, we'll teach you about the Photo Impact Interface, beginning with a walkthrough of the workspace and all of its features, as well as a description of the various panels and toolbars. When you open Photo Impact, you will see a welcome screen offering you various options to make it easier for you to get to the functions you want quickly. From here, it opens a typical program window. As you get familiar with the different tools illustrated in this page and the next, you'll find that they are quite easy to use. Basic mode. Initially, you have the choice of working in the basic mode or standard mode. Basic mode simply presents a simplified layout and you can select the standard mode at any time you need to access more functions directly from the main window. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will work in the standard mode throughout. We'll start off with opening an existing image. If you want to open a file that's already on your computer, you can click on the File menu, then Open, or just click on the Open icon on the standard toolbar, or just click Control o then click on the image file you want. Now we'll introduce you to the Photo Impact workspace. Photo Impact provides a huge assortment of tools. You can access them through the menu bar, the standard toolbar, the attribute toolbar, the tool panel, and the panel manager. At the top of the interface, you'll find a traditional window style menu bar, where you can access almost all of Photo Impact's functions. Just below that, you'll find the standard toolbar, which gives you access to tools for opening and saving documents acquiring images from scanners and digital cameras, and other tools. Access Panels On the right side of the program, you'll find the Panel Manager, which lets you access each of the Photo Impact's tool panels. Each one of the buttons represents a set of tools, or a full range of easy-to-use features. You can click on each button to access the panel, then close the panel or click the button again to make it disappear. Here you'll find the Layer Manager, the Selection Manager, Document Manager, Browse Manager, Easy Palette, Color Panel, the Quick Command Panel, and the Histogram Viewer. Let's take a look at some of the panels. The Layer Manager. Click on the top button to open the Layer Manager, which displays all the objects present in your active document as individual thumbnails. You'll be learning about objects in a later chapter of this tutorial. As you work on a file, these thumbnails will show any editing that you apply to the objects, and each thumbnail is numbered sequentially. The Document Manager. The third button is for the Document Manager, which helps you keep track of all your open documents by displaying them as thumbnails. This way, it's easy to switch between several open documents. You can click a document thumbnail to bring it to the top of the workspace, or you can just use the shortcut by clicking Control tab to shuffle between documents. Browse Manager. The fourth button is for the Browse Manager, which makes it easier to browse and open your documents. One great feature is the Recent Files folder, which lets you conveniently browse and open all of your latest work. Using the Easy Palette. The next button is for the Easy Palette, a special panel that is the easiest way to apply special effects and filters, letting you drag each effect from the Easy Palette directly onto an image. You can also store different items such as tools, settings, effects, templates, and many more items for quick access. All of the items in the Easy Palette are separated into two groups, Galleries and Object Libraries. By clicking on the button in the upper left corner, you'll access the Galleries, which contain filters and effects. If you click on the button next to it, you'll access the Libraries, which contain different types of objects that you can use in your documents. To apply an item from the Easy Palette, first click the Easy Palette icon in the Panel Manager. Click Galleries for special effects paint tools, fill tools, and so on. Click Object Libraries for object or path presets. To display and hide details, you can click on the plus and minus signs, or just double-click on each gallery and the library listed. Now go to the gallery and select the Painting section. The painting effects are displayed on the right side of the Easy Palette. Scroll down until you find the effect called Etching 1. You can apply this effect two ways. Either double-click it, or just drag it and drop it onto the document. You may find that the effect you've applied is either too strong or too weak. To fix this, you can customize how you apply the effect. Simply right-click on the effect thumbnail and select Modify Properties and Apply. 
Then use the dialog box to adjust each of the controls to fine-tune your effect. The preview window will give you a thumbnail picture of how your changes will look. You can also click on the preview button to see the changes in full size. When you do this, the painting window will ask whether you want to keep the changes, continue modifying with the changes, or just reset the picture to how it was. A very useful and powerful feature is the ability to view your selected image with all the effects applied, like this. Quick Command Panel The bottom button is for the Quick Command Panel, which offers you tools to quickly access some commonly used commands, or to retrace or redo some steps you've made. Click on this button and select the History tab. Using the History tab, when you're experimenting with Photo Impact, one of the best features is the ability to keep track of your editing changes, as well as to undo what you've done. After making changes to an image, the quickest way to return to the previous state is to select it from the list in the History tab. You can also just click on the Undo button, or just select Ctrl-Z. To redo a command, just click on the Redo button, or select Ctrl-Y. You not only have a history list of the commands you've applied to your document, it also lets you change how many levels you can undo your commands. Click on the Change Undo Level button. Photo Impact lets you record up to 200 levels. But remember that the higher the level, the more memory your computer is going to need. Tool Panel and Attribute Panel. Just below the standard toolbar is the Attribute Toolbar. And next to it on the left side is the Tool Panel. These two sections work together. The tool panel contains all the tools you'll need for manipulating and adjusting your images, and the attribute toolbar lets you adjust how the tools work. Click on a few of the tools, and you'll notice that the attribute panel changes to show the adjustments for each of these tools. In the next few chapters, you'll learn more about how these tools work. For tools in the tool panel, some have a submenu with additional tools. To access these tools, click the small triangle icon on the lower right of the button. When the submenu pops up, you can drag it away from its original position to make it float anywhere on the screen, or dock it to another part of the program window. Customizing your personal UI layout. Photo Impact lets you set the workspace to fit the way you work best. You can drag the toolbars or panels away from the original position to make them float anywhere on the screen, or dock them to another section of the program window. You can also resize most floating toolbars. You can also add and remove buttons on the standard toolbar, depending on the ones you need the most. Or you can simply select the desired toolbars from the list. And finally, you can use the switch button on the top right of the screen to easily open any ULEAD software that you have installed on your computer. In this chapter, you have learned about the Photo Impact interface. In the next chapter, we will do some image enhancement.